This past weekend, I finally had the pleasure of attending a protest here in Vancouver with citizens from all political stripes. That's right, I finally had a chance to attend a protest without looking over my shoulder to see which anti-oil lunatic might want to get in my face. On Sunday, about 150 plus Vancouver residents showed up at Kitts Beach to protest what is essentially wasteful city spending by Vision Vancouver and Mayor Gregor Robertson. You see, the city is currently spending nearly $10 million between upgrades on the Burrard Street Bridge and sidewalk expansion on Point Grey Road. You may recall that Point Grey Road is one of the most expensive places in the country to live and only a couple years ago they were granted a private road and bike lane. You may also know this is the street and region of Vancouver where David Suzuki has one of his many multi-million dollar homes and is where Lululemon founder Chip Wilson lives and the former home of Mayor Gregor Robertson. I gotta be honest, I wasn't expecting that many people to show up, but I feel, and as you will see in many of the people uh, attending the protest, that this city has out of control spending with a complete lack of consultation to its residents. With out of control housing prices and an ever increasing cost of living due to an expanded bureaucracy and red tape, we are really at a tipping point in this city right now. And I feel that was the anger that was being tapped into at the rally. One of the things I like doing most as a reporter at these events is the exact opposite of what the media party does, actually talking to people at the event. And for once, people seemed eager to talk to the rebel. So let's take a quick look at a few of those interviews. Key issues for me is uh, include lack of transparency and genuine consultation. In the absence of those two things, it's really hard to know how the money is being spent. This is our city. This is not Gregor's city. There's been absolutely zero consideration, in my view, to the businesses that, that have been really seriously damaged. Old family businesses, in many cases, laundries and little corner stores and, and uh, that kind of thing that who've had their businesses killed because of it. Um, and there's been no compensation, there's been no consideration, there's been no thought to how do we avoid hurting their bottom line. He's supposed to care about that stuff, and he's he's apparently not even not even paying attention. Well, I just see the chronic waste of money on uh, projects that don't seem to produce anything useful when there's tremendous need in the city. May fourth, there was a council meeting for the approval of phase two, the final, um, the, the the most recent project or the upcoming project, the six and a half million one, and. I was not there. People that were there said it was about 80% opposed. And they said, okay, right, we're going ahead. And, and reasonable people are saying, just, we don't want this money spent here. I was also able to speak quickly with one of the event organizers. He told me about the growing anger amongst Vancouverites. And, you know, we'd like to see Point, Point Grey Road stopped. I think when, you, when you've got a city and you're looking at a homeless population that's growing, when one of the mandates was to, was to eliminate it, um, how do you look in the mirror at night and think this is okay and spending this much money uh, on, a, on a road that nobody actually wants? The city needs to listen. I think this is the beginning mm -hmm. of something and, and I hope it continues. I hope more residents, our reach is going to get bigger, it's going to get broader and City Hall, you know, take notice. I mean, we've got the soundbite. You said you'd be more transparent. Put your money where your mouth is. Start doing it. Awesome. Mean what you say and say what you mean. No matter how many protests I attend, I am always shocked by at least one of the people I interview. This time, however, it was a pleasant shock. In fact, I don't think I've ever been as impressed with a protester as much as this one. So let's check out 10-year-old Sophia, a very concerned and extremely well-informed Vancouver resident. You, they don't need to make the sidewalk bigger. It's already big enough. It's if you if you want things if Gregor Robertson wants things to be green, why chop down trees? You know what this young lady reminded me of? The complete opposite of that child whose mother forced her to hold the F U C K Enbridge sign at a rally in 2014. What was so sad about that was that child had no idea they were being used as a political pawn for their mother's political views. However, Sophia was the opposite. Her mother told me she had been inspired all on her own and had been dragged out there to the protest by her child. Now, that's like what I like to call one informed citizen. On Monday, I did see some critical coverage of the event from the left-wing media here in Vancouver. The Georgia Strait in particular had one article which seemed to demonize the opposition NPA for attending the rally. 
That's pretty ridiculous because Vision attends climate rallies all the time. Never mind the fact every anti-oil rally protest here in Vancouver features NDP MPs and MLAs consistently. But in particular, there was this one line in the Georgia Strait article by Charlie Smith, and it goes like this. The NPA's bike lash in recent years hasn't helped it win the confidence of those who see cycling as a means to save the planet. Let that sink in. If that's true, and we have voters who believe that cycling and bike lanes in a relatively small municipality of 650,000 people is going to save the planet, then that kind of idiocy never ever deserves to be pandered to. It's a shame on the Georgia Strait and the reporter for suggesting this is a legitimate political position to take, because it is not. Now, one of the reasons I'm excited to go full time with The Rebel is an opportunity to actually provide critical and substantive coverage of the highly secretive and almost authoritarian Vision Vancouver government. I'll say it once, Gregor, your free ride is about to end. For the Rebel.media, I'm Christopher Wilson. Thanks for watching. Click here to never miss a Rebel update. Want even more? The Rebel will click here to become a premium member.